Hello again, everybody. Well, we all know what the second part of this video is about. Uh, it's a streamed uh, an hour ago, according to my computer. Uh, I might need refreshing, though. Two hours ago. There we go. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, well, where was I? I need to read back from the... Uh, I need to read back from the um from the comments uh from the from part one that I made uh which of course was painful. I was on the verge of crying. Uh well, when I say that, I might be a bit be a bit over dramatic, but that's genuinely what it felt like. Uh. Hang on, I, I put live chat replay on, so why is that not coming up for my previous video? Oh, I didn't wanna I didn't wanna start this video just working out that. I wanna talk about my football club. For God's sake. Uh Oh, bear with me a second, guys. This is ridiculous. Uh, hang on a minute. Uh, if I can just update that real quick. I might be able to get it on... Uh, Oh Jesus. Um Let's just get it up. Why doesn't it show the bloody chat? Uh, it doesn't matter. You know what? I'll just I'll continue from I'll continue from where I um where I left off uh where I left off um Yeah, no, uh, obviously, as we all know, uh, Morgan Whitaker has left Plymouth Argyle Football Club. He's been recalled back to Swansea. Swansea. I nearly bit my, my tongue while saying that. Uh, sums up the mood, I guess. Uh, uh, Graham said, still can't believe it, although there was a hint it was coming. To be fair, Graham's got a point there. Onwards and upwards, Green Army. Uh, like I was saying earlier, but this Ben Wayne could really be a promising signing. And if he does deliver, if he does deliver, then... I mean, like I said, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a setback. It's a setback. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we're top of the league. We're top of the league. We're the best team in the league. The best team in the Premier League just drew tonight Arsenal against Newcastle. To be fair, they're probably the two best Premier League teams, let's be honest. Uh, but we're still top of the league. Yes, we got Ipswich breathing down our neck. We got Sheffield Wednesday breathing down our neck. We got these two hard away games from both of them. Also from Bolton as well. Like, we got that coming, if you can see, and then we got this coming next week. Uh, oh, also in the meantime, I'm going to this place, the Mem, next week as well. Papa John's game. Uh, but let's uh, let's read through what else is um, is new in the comment section. Uh, Pingo. 
the Bristol Rovers fan saying up the gas. Hello again. Uh, Panda Boy Luca saying hola, mate, up, up the town. Uh, okay, only one team in Devon is saying hi, mate. I nearly cried. Whitaker is gutted. Like I said earlier, Whitaker is gutted himself. I don't think he wanted to go back to Swansea himself. So it really is. It feels like a um, it feels like a um, stagger in the heart. But we we can, like I said earlier, we can still do this. We can still do this. We're top of the league for a reason. We're the best team in the league right now. We're top of the league. The table doesn't lie. We can still get promoted this season. It is a blow. Losing Morgan is a blow. But we still got the team capable of getting promoted this season. And like I said, like I said, I think our two most viable players are Michael Cooper and Dan Scar. If we lost one of them, it'd be a completely different scenario. Michael Cooper is the best keeper we've had since Roman Lario back when I was a kid. The Frenchman. The absolute legend. Uh, but to be fair, only one team in Devon did say Whitaker is leaving us in a good position at least. Which is very true. I mean, I look at it thinking... If he left after the Ipswich game, I probably would have been a lot happier because Morgan might have been a big impact for that Ipswich game as well. And he could have been as well. Look, he's our joint top scorer with Ryan Hardy this season. So what does that tell you? Um, the amount of finishes he's made and scored this season has been unbelievable for us. And I saw that from the minute I saw his consolidation goal when we got hammered 5-1 by Charlton way back in August. Honestly, if you see this again, Morgan, honestly, I love you so much, mate. Honestly, I can't thank you enough for everything you've done for our football club. Everything you've done for our football club. I won't be that sympathetic, though, if you do move to someone like Ipswich, Bolton, Portsmouth, especially Exeter, Bristol Rovers, Peterborough, Derby, basically anyone in League One, if you want to put it that way. Um Tommy E is saying Ryan Lowe wants Ryan Hardy. I mean, everyone wants Ryan Hardy at this rate. Oxford was linked to him, according to Liam. And then if Ryan Lowe wants him, that's Preston linked with Ryan Hardy as well. I mean, I was speaking to Harvey England earlier. Big shout out for Hart to Harvey, by the way. Um, and Harvey and I was saying, I was saying to Harvey that Maybe Ryan Hardy is more a Ryan Lowe player than a Stephen Schumacher player, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean the fact that Hardy's been fan fantastic for us. And even though, even though this ain't his best season, even though it ain't his best season, he's still our joint top, top scorer with Morgan Whitaker, who's now departed us to go back to Swansea. Jacob Moore is saying Bolton v Plymouth, Papa John's final. It could easily happen. I would love that, to be fair. That would be an experience at Wembley. But I would also love an Argyle Pompey final at Wembley because just the thought of having the Dockyard Derby, just the thought of having the Dockyard Derby at Wembley Stadium is phenomenal. Because, you know, we're going to sell 45,000 and, you know, Portsmouth are going to sell 45,000 and that, that inner 90,000 capacity stadium. It's a Papa John's final. I don't care, but it will be huge. It's like a few seasons ago when Portsmouth and Sunderland had each other in that Papa John's final and they brought so many. Uh, like only one team in Devon has said, his goal against Ipswich are exactly unbelievable. The Ipswich win is still my favourite win of the season because just the way it, it just was and etc. And talking to Alex Griffin before the game and uh, talking to Ipswich fans after the game on what they thought and stuff. And um, even Ipswich should, um, even Ipswich fans were saying to me after the game that even though we're, we're annoyed it's our first defeat, we're still confident in the team. And I can't blame them for that at the end of the day. I really can't. Um, but when Ipswich went 1-0 up in that game, I honestly thought, well, if they get promoted, I'm not going to be surprised because we were one nil down for quite some bit. And also the scorer was Freddie Ladapo. And Ladapo knows us so well because he used to play for us, of course, at the end of the day. 
But then we turned it around, of course, magnificently in that second half. Uh, Jake is saying, I wonder if Whitaker will, re will return to Argyle in the future. Um, might do. He does love us to bits. And I can tell he was absolutely gutted with his Instagram post uh, when, um, when he announced he was going back to Swansea. Uh, he hopes we get promoted as well. Morgan, Morgan, honestly. You're a legend, mate, for that, honestly. Good on him, good on him. But to be honest, Jake, Morgan Whitaker can play all three, attacking midfielder, um, winger and striker. Ben Wayne can play striker. So it does feel like a replacement in that context. But it also, with Ben Wayne signing for us, we've now got a... Um, We've now got a choice between between Ben Wayne, Cosgrove, and Ryan Hardy to lead the line for us because I don't see Jeff Cart coming back any soon, and um, he's doing well at Swindon at the moment, which is a shame because I love Jeff Cart to bits. He's Cornish just like myself, so there you are. But if we um, the thing is I. I have full hope in Ben Wayne. I have full hope in Ben Wayne. Uh, but we, we've got to find out, haven't we? Um, he could really take on where Whitaker left off. And I really hope he can do that for us. A new New Zealander and um, a new, new New Zealander and reminds me of when I grew up, grew up with um, Rory Fallon, who was in the New Zealand team for the World Cup. He played for us. He was absolutely fantastic for us in the championship. So there you are. Um, ben, Bolton fan. Um, big shout out to Ben's football vlogs, actually. actually, um, If you want to look at any Bolton Wanderers contact, um, 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 content, please look at Ben's channel. Uh, ben and I are going to be meeting on Saturday when I come up to Bolton to watch the game. Uh, and look out for the Argyle way um, after Thursday morning because Ben's going to be in my preview for that as well. Uh, but yeah, it... I know Bolton are a bit behind us in the table, but it's going to be a big game. No matter what, it's going to be a big game. Bolton are a very underrated side. It's going to be a big game. Dion Charles versus Michael Cooper. Morley versus Bally Mumba. Randall will take on... Um, no, sorry, it's Morley versus Randall. It's Bradley versus Bally Mumba. And honestly, it's, it's going to be a very interesting game, honestly, between us two on Saturday. Wouldn't even surprise me if it will be nil-nil because I think both Argyle and Bolton have the two best keepers in the league in Michael Cooper and James Trafford. And they could both put on masterclasses. Dion Charles is going to have it hard against Cooper. But at the same time, Ryan Hardy and Sam Cosgrove are going to have it hard against James Trafford. It's going to be a very interesting game. And I also think it could be 3-2 either way, to be honest. Record-wise, we should win, and um, really, we should be the favourites going into this game, but I wouldn't underestimate Bolton at all. Just remember Portsmouth versus Ipswich the other week. Ipswich were massive favourites going into that game, and Pompey gave Ipswich a very, very hard time, and it ended two all draw. It ended being a two-all draw, but it went for the worst for Pompey anyway, because Pompey lost at, um, at home to Charlton, and of course, Danny Cowley's been sacked. So there you go. It depends on who Pompey's going to um, sign now to replace him. And I've heard Liam Richardson, the man who won the league for Wigan last season, is the favourite to take over at Fratton Park. Uh, from what I've heard, we've completely filled up the upper half, I believe, of the away end at Bolton. Uh, that's what I mean, the top tier, like what Ben's just said. But I don't think we've properly um, sold out yet. Um, I don't think we've properly sold out yet at Bolton. Uh, there's only one game I haven't seen us sold out this season, and that was MK Dons away. But let's be honest, let's, we're not surprised about that because given the amount of empty seats MK Dons <laughs> always have left, they should have allocated us more. Um. Only one team in Devon is saying, uh, I know you went to Cheltenham away. So did I. Yeah. Um, Whitaker got a late goal and we won. Who will do that now? Good point. Good point. Good point there, mate. Honestly. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm just going to send Harvey England the link. Uh, 
I'm going to send Harvey England um, the link because uh, Harvey is going to join us very soon. Uh, so it won't just be myself. Um, but yeah, you've got a good point there, mate. If if Whitaker wasn't playing against Cheltenham, who would have scored that goal for us? So, I mean, if we didn't sign Ben Wayne, I personally think Whitaker would have stayed for the rest of the season. And Whitaker loves us to bits as well. But I guess, like I said earlier, I guess Swansea have our uh, ah, I can't speak. I guess Swansea have other ideas and. It's a pain in the ass regarding all that, basically. Uh, sorry, I'm still trying to get my um, the comments um, from the live chat earlier up, but it's just not bloody working for some reason. And I don't know why YouTube's being an absolute muppet for that. Because I want to see them so I can talk about it on here. Uh, oh, well. For the time being, I'm going to send Harvey this uh, this uh, StreamYard link. Uh, so I'll do that now. Um, so, chat, feel free to say anything, of course. Uh, Brandon, um, of course, hello, mate. Um, obviously, um, we speak on Discord, of course. It's a bloody long trip, so anything over 1,500, I will be impressed. I mean, to be honest, given in g given the given that in the far west country, uh, given the far west country we're in, uh, and I know this as well because I know Plymouth so well ever since I was a kid and me growing up from, I'm from Cornwall, growing up with Plymouth and um, Cornwall City, Truro and other towns like your St. Hostels, Bodmins, Red Roofs, Penzance, Falmouth, etc. Of course, I'm from Penzance and Newland. But anyway, um, obviously, I know Plymouth very well. So with that remote location um, we're in um, for Cornwall and Plymouth and uh, West Devon, uh, it really is a long trip. In fact, you could say that for all of Devon in general, like even our annoying neighbours, Exeter, um, take um, long travelling numbers as well. Uh, Trafford or Cooper? OK, right. Um, these are the two best keepers in the league, in my opinion. Uh, if you're going to go last season, I'm going to say Michael Cooper. Michael Cooper was 100% without a doubt the best keeper in League One last season. Not even a not even a competition. He was in the team of the season. This season, don't get me wrong. It's and it's actually annoying me saying this because if I had to choose, Cooper is my favourite player for Argyle as well. But on paper, Michael Cooper is Michael Cooper is the uh, Michael Cooper is the um, is the best um, is the best keeper in League One. He's on paper the best keeper in. Um, in League One, but in terms of season improvement in, if, in itself and the season he's had, I am going to go with Trafford, and that's me being non-biased. And the reason why I say that is because um, the reason why Bolton have con um, have not conceded many goals is literally because of him. Honestly, Bolton have got themselves a fantastic keeper, and honestly, fair play to them for that. Personally, yeah, they're for me the two best keepers in the league. And I don't know why some people say Stockdale's the best keeper in the league. Don't get me wrong, he's a decent keeper. There's no way I think Sheffield Wednesday's number one keeper is the is the best keeper in the league. I even think Wickham's new number one is a better keeper than Stockdale right now. And I'll tell you what, what signing Wickham made for that as well. Um uh Liam, uh scum take long traveling numbers. What have I just heard? Yes, I know, and I know I want to laugh at that as well, but Let's be honest, but we're given the location that us and the annoying cousins, rotten cousins, Exeter are in, with the location we're in, we do travel a lot. Both of our clubs do, and even Torquay to a certain extent as well. But obviously, obviously, Exeter don't bring the amount we do, of course, because, well, first of all, we're much bigger, and second of all, we're much more passionate. Um, if any Exeter fans are listening to this, they will try and roast me, but tough. <laughs> Right. Anyway, let's try and get um, Harvey on this. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna send him. I'm gonna I'm gonna send him the link. Uh, but yeah. Um, while I'm talking about um, Whitaker, of course, actually, let me know, guys, in the comment section because next week I should be doing a video. I still need to do it, and some point before Ipswich, I hope I'm planning to do my mid table. Um, I'm planning to do my, um not mid-table, midway predictions of the 2022-23 season. Um, and uh, yeah, there's going to be some expectations on where I've put 
clubs and etc. But I'm going to tell you, there might be some surprises I might put as well. So you may be thinking, wow, fair play to Jack for going for that. But yeah, it's going to be um, it's going to be interesting. What's Tommy say? No hate when we play Exeter, they will win. No! Oh, Tommy, man, have faith in us, mate. We're going to secure promotion when we play Exeter. <laughs> and everyone knows that. And I'm going to be um, invading the pitch going, and that tastes like promotion. Well, we could all dream. We could all dream. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Imagine if we did the double, though, over Exeter, like we did the year we came up in 2017 from League Two, then it's going to be unbelievable. There's only one thing I don't want coming into St. James's Park in April, and that's bloody losing 4 0 again because that was horrible. But it sucks on Exeter anyway for that season because what happens? Oh, yeah. Plymouth went up and Exeter didn't. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, let's move on. Um, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm so, sorry, Harvey. I need to, I need to send you this, um, StreamYard link. Uh, so I'll, um, I'll do that now. Uh, honestly, these two away games coming, Bolton and Ipswich, and of course, Sheffield Wednesday in February, it's going to be absolutely, it could really define our season, honestly. It could really define our season, these three away games, and they're going to be absolutely huge regardless. Um, like I said, we should beat Bolton record-wise and stuff, but I'm not going to underestimate them at all. They have got a decent side. And you know what? It's a bit of a spoilers, but at the moment, I really think they will finish in the playoffs this season. It honestly wouldn't shock me at all. But obviously, midway season predictions, I will talk about... Um, Next week, when that gets uploaded properly, uh, just gonna send Harvey this. Uh, I'm just gonna say, um, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna send Harvey this, um, this invite. Uh, Jacob is saying, um, actually, you know what? I'll quickly, I'll, re I'll, I'll reply back to that in a second, Jacob. Uh, only one team in Devon is saying I'm off to bed, back to school tomorrow. Okay, now have a good night, mate. Have a good night. Um, up the greens. Up the greens uh, at the end of the day. Up the Janners. Uh, right. Uh, yep, that's the link. Copy that. So you better bloody send. And there we are, all sent. So that's that done. Um... Yeah, I will do, mate. I will do, mate. Yeah, he'll um he'll come on. Uh Tommy E saying no one expected that Exeter will be this. I wouldn't say good. I would say they're doing better than what most people expected. Uh a lot of people had the rotten cousins to get relegated this season. I know 4-0 written all over it was one of them. So no, uh, yeah. Cheers to um Tom for that. I had Exeter in my predictions to finish 17th. I'm going to be honest, I did think they were going to survive, but I, did, but I didn't think they'd be um, where they are now, obviously. Uh, it, it, it It's painful for me to say this because obviously, um, it's painful for me to say this because um, when I saw them come up, obviously it's, it's annoying because it's Exeter, but in a way... Um, in a way, it was. Um, in a way, I'll I'll take them coming up because the derby's back at the end of the day. But as long as we thrash them every season, that's all I can um, care about because it's Exeter. No one likes them. <laughs> Steve, go to bed, Jack. Go to bed, Jack. You will not grow to be a big janitor. I'm not going to bed yet, Steve. Maybe in an hour's time because I do love my sleep at the end of the day. But um, but yeah. Uh, Oh man, I'm still again. I'm still gutted about Whitaker. It's it. It just. It just. It just ended today. Just ended so badly because um, like I had Ipswich booked. I had Bolton booked. I was looking forward to this weekend um and next weekend, full of confidence going into these two away games. And then right when I'm talking to people on Discord, I get thrown by Twitter that Morgan Whitaker's gone back to Swansea. And it's genuinely, it's genuinely the worst, the worst um feeling ever. It really is. Um yeah, thank you, Robert. Get some food. <laughs> 
I did get some food earlier, to be fair. So that was literally what my um, what my break was. Uh, don't worry, Messi is coming. Could you imagine? Could you imagine uh, one of the greatest of all time joins Plymouth Argyle? I remember my FIFA 17 days where Martin Tyler commentated it's Barcelona versus Plymouth Argyle. And I just played as Graham Carey, just outclassing Gerard Piquet. It was absolutely unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Uh, that's all I can say, but you can dream. You can dream. Uh, oh, yeah. One comment I did remember from from the previous um previous part in part one was that uh was about um it was something to do with mk dons uh so basically uh yeah we um i think what i was gonna say was oh uh, yeah it, it, it's just about how they're doing and stuff at the moment i just did not expect mk to be this far down because i i had them to finish ninth at the start of the season and then now look where they are. But I think with the financial stuff they have, I think they will just survive. But ah, uh, bugger knows, bugger knows, bugger knows. Um, I'm just waiting for Harvey to join. I have sent him the email and stuff. Uh, let's let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look at some of the um. What's uh? Of course, two red rods. Uh, my uncle is a Leeds fan. Ugh. Uh, that's all I can say. You can have Junior Furpo from us. Uh, well, it boosts the squad, doesn't it? But if you take Mumba from us, I am not going to be happy. Uh, Jacob Moore, Bolton fan, saying sign Bakioko and Kachunga, please. We, well, I don't really want us to sign Kachunga. Let's be honest, he has been awful for Bolton. Uh, Argyle Army is joined. The Argyle Army is joined. Evening, my friend. Hope all is well. Mate, how are you doing, mate? Hope all is well, mate. Uh, honestly... Um, honestly, it's good to hear from you, mate. Um, um, honestly, how are you finding the season so far? Um, I'm loving it, maybe apart from tonight because of the news about Whitaker, but yeah, I like literally what Pingo, the Bristol Rovers fan has just said here. I felt it when Matty Taylor went to the, um, went to the, went to the crap, losing key players like that sinks you. It really does feel like this. And I said this to um, Luca, the Ipswich fan. Um, I need to... Um, Luca, the Ipswich fan. I said this to Luca earlier. Um, I said, tonight, it would feel like if, for example, you lost, for example, Harness or Sam Morsey, for example, this season. Sam Morsey, for me, is, along with Adam Randall and Bar Barry Bannon, the three best midfielders in the league this season. Uh, so, yeah, exactly that, basically. Argyle Army, how are we, fella? I'll definitely need to get in one of your vlogs soon. Uh, been smashing it recently. Mate, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Been sat down most evenings and watching them in full. Keep them up, honestly. Hopefully make a return soon, Tommy lad. Every, everyone else is smashing it regardless. But yeah, no. Fair enough, mate. Um, fair enough, mate. Honestly, no, I, pre I appreciate that, mate. Thank you. Uh, yeah, honestly... Um, if you want to come and meet me, uh, um, yeah, and someone said this to me earlier. Someone said they wanted a photo with me when we got our next home game against Cheltenham in two weeks' time. Uh, I will be at the Cheltenham game, obviously, and the Derby game, and um, pretty much the rest of the home games, of course, for this season, unless something unforeseeable ha drastically happens. But that's going to be very unlikely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, obviously, well, I work in turnstiles at Argyle. So usually I get to the ground in about the middle early morning, around 10, 11 o'clock, if I can possible. And then uh, and then hang around the ground for a bit and then go into work and then watch the game from there. So, yeah, honestly, you're more than welcome to come and meet me before and after the games and et cetera. People say these are vlogs. The reason why I don't call them vlogs, because I want to make them like proper Netflix. Well, not exactly Netflix, but like. Minutes wise, because most of my um, um, episodes are like half an hour, 40 minutes, um, 35 minutes, etc. I call them episodes um, because and that's why um, that's why um, that's why they're that long. And that's why I call them episodes, because I know some most most vlogs people um, aim to have them around 10 minutes or something. But no, I'd like I want mine to be so much longer because I want it to feel like a TV episode, for example. And that comes from my media background as well. Uh but yeah, um, 
Yeah, no, honestly, um, no, I appreciate that from uh, from Argyle Army, honestly. Uh, Brandon, Bolton fan, I'll come and have a chat at Bolton, mate, if you're up for it. Mate, honestly, by all means, come and have a chat on what your score prediction is going to be and stuff. Uh, please don't predict a Bolton win, although it wouldn't surprise me if you did. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Predict what you want to predict. But yeah, honestly... Uh, Honestly, um, yeah, come and have a chat with me before the game and after the game if you want. I don't know what I don't know what time um, my mate from um, from Plymouth is planning to leave uh, the um, Bolton Stadium, the Uni Bowl, uh, after the game at five o'clock. So I have to work around that, but I should be able to meet people before and after the game. So yeah, anyone is more than welcome, of course. So yeah, no, um, should be good, should be good, should be good. But yeah. Um, while I'm waiting for Harvey, um, I think I covered most of um, about Morgan Whitaker earlier. So if you do want to um, check that out, click off this video now and uh, check out part one. But while I'm waiting for Harvey, and that's when we'll talk about Whitaker, I'm going to run through how I've done by um, by my um, by my League One predictions uh, so far um, on how I'm doing. Uh, yeah, I have a feeling Lampard is going to get sacked from Everton, not going to lie. They lost to Brighton tonight. So, yeah. Um, so, we'll go through it from bottom to top. So, I'm reacting to my um, prediction so far. I'll do a, I'll do a, um, I'll do a, um, I'll do a proper reaction, um, of course, at the end of the season, when the season finishes, of course. But let's just, let me just cast through back to July when I predicted the season and see how I've done. So, OK, we'll start with the bottom and we'll go to the top. So bottom, I had Fleetwood. I had Fleetwood to go down. This I've got completely wrong. Fleetwood have actually surprised me a bit this season. I thought after the way they ended last season and only just surviving on goal difference over Gillingham. Again, I'm surprised Gillingham are doing so badly in League Two at the moment because um, I had them to go straight back up in my League Two predictions and that's not quite going well for them at all at the moment. Uh, but no, as for Fleetwood... I and I honestly had them to go down this season. I really thought Cod's Vlogs team was finally going to succumb to the drop uh this season. But Fleetwood, Scott Brown's really proved me wrong this season so far. And to be honest, fair play to them. Fair play to them. Uh fair play to um to to um to Fleetwood for that. Honestly, uh they're in um they're no well. They're not far from the relegation zone, but they haven't really been like quite in danger in it. Like obviously your Burton's, Morecambe's, Forest Greens, for example. But so yeah, I'd say for the season Fleetwood are having so far, and I know we've got them to play at home soon, but I'm still dreading it because Fleetwood is legit our bogey side. It is, they are legit our bogey side. They proved it again at the start of the season at the Highbury Stadium. Uh, back in August uh, when we lost bloody two one, um, we can just. There's something about us not doing well against Fleetwood Town Football Club. So yeah, Fleetwood have slightly provide, um, surprised me this season. They have done. They have. They have. They have. They have done well. They have done well so far. So Scott Brown's really got to keep it up. Uh, reading Lucas' message here, unpopular opinion: Morecambe will not go down. If Morecambe don't go down, it will honestly, it will honestly be for me one of the greatest escapes. Honestly, and to be fair, to be fair, I'd be happy for them as well. Of course, our former legend manages Morecambe, Derek Adams. Uh, and I've always they're a club I've always not minded at all, to be fair. So uh um if I wanted to throw opinions in like that, of course. But yeah, no, honestly, if Morecambe do survive, it will be a brilliant escape from them and fair play to them if they do manage to pull that off. And I tell you what, they had their best result of the season last week. Um, last time out, absolutely humiliating Burton 5-0. And fair play to them for that. Um, Brandon, Bolton fan, saying Fleetwood are a nuisance to play against. I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Argyle Army saying, um, good choice of blocks, mate. I sit there too, row Q. Block eight. Block eight. So I'll have to check that out, guys. I'll have to check that out. Because usually I'm in the corner between Devonport and Lindhurst. But to be honest, as I love my ground, so our club so much and our ground, I really just try and sit everywhere, anywhere, of course, really, unless it's the away end, obviously. So, yeah, uh, I know where I want to sit for when we play Pompey, that's for sure. And that is near the away fans because it's always fun to wind some of their fans up at the end of the day. And you know what? I know 4-0 is going to be coming to Home Park in February as well. And... Uh, 
and my um good Pompey mate Callum uh will be going as well. So yeah, I they might they might see me in the crowd in the distance. So it'll be quite funny to be fair. But yeah, um Argyle Army, um, oh Argyle Army, you went to Fleetwood this season. Yeah, I couldn't go to Fleetwood this season because I was at Silverstone for MotoGP, but I was at I was um I was at um qualifying. Um I was at qualifying for Silverstone for MotoGP when um when uh basically when uh Fleetwood um when we played Fleetwood. So I didn't look at the results while I was watching the qualifying. And the minute the qualifying finished at five o'clock while I was heading back to the grandstand, uh have a good sleep, Tommy. Have a good one, mate. Uh Fleetwood, I saw they bloody beat us 2 1. So yeah, I was not happy at all. Yeah, and you know what, our girl army, I went to Charlton away this season. So yeah, that was not fun. I will tell you that now. We got absolutely hammered. And after that result, I thought Charlton were gonna were gonna be um a, an, a likely um candidate for pushing for promotion this season. But God, look how much they've dropped off this season. So yeah, uh yeah, uh so yeah, Fleetwood I had bottom, not quite um not quite um not quite um gone to plan. And Argyle Rule 123 has just made a good point here. Rule number one, never fall in love with a lone player. And it's hard because I do love Whitaker and also I love Bally Mumba as well. So personally I think he'll stay. I think Mumba will stay. I bet that's just me being optimistic and positive, and I want to stay like that anyway because I hate being pessimistic. It's the worst feeling in the world. And the worst feeling is in the world is when you have that toxic fan base of our club, especially when we lost to Port Vale, going, oh, the downfall starts here. I'm like, you really don't believe in the team, don't you? do you? You absolute melons. It winds me up. It winds me up to bits, honestly. Like, like... Some of our fans left after the Wimbledon game just because uh, at half time, just because we were 3 0 down. Freaking believe in the team, you melons. Lewis Gale, hi, mate. Can I get a photo at Ipswich away? By all means, mate, um, you're more than welcome to, mate. I plan to get to Ipswich early uh, next week because I'll be staying in London. Uh, I plan to stay in London the day before. Uh, so yeah, honestly, um, yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. I'll I'll try and get what photos I can, but obviously, I'll, I'll, there's a lot of people at Ipswich I'll be trying to meet next week at the same time as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, moving on to my predictions again. Twenty third, right? Twenty third, even worse than my Fleetwood prediction. Twenty third, I had Port Vale, and that has also gone completely wrong at the moment because Vale have been, in my honest opinion, fantastic this season so far. They have really defied all the odds, me included, of course. Uh, they've come up from the playoff final when they beat Mansfield. And I'll tell you what, they have really proved me wrong so far this season. And fair play to them for it. They, I thought they beat us 2-0 fair, 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 fair and square uh, back in December. Um, it was a painful one for us. We wasted so many chances. And I have to be honest, we did not deserve to win at all versus Port Vale. But... At the same time, we should have finished our chances um, as well. But Port Vale are currently ninth in the league. I had them 23rd. So they are doing really well at the moment. They've really proved me wrong. And I tell you what, they're a good side to watch at the moment as well. Robert's off. Um, off. So, yeah, have a good one, mate. Um, catch you later. Um, so, yeah. Uh, moving on to 20 seconds. Now, 20 second at the moment is spot on. I had Morecambe to finish 20 second. Well, they, they have been bottom for most of the league, but uh, they have been bottom for most of the league. But after that win they've had over Burton, that 5 0, they've um, they basically they, they're now off that um, foot of the bottom. So, yeah, they're really doing um, that's, that's a lot better from them. And like Luca was saying earlier, imagine if they pull off the escape. If they survive this season, it will be a fantastic escape. Honestly, it'd be unbelievable from Morecambe. So yeah, it would be, um, it would be unbelievable. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with Cole Stockton though. Of course he sent in the transfer request at the start of the season. And that's why I said to people, I was like, he, he'll hardly play well this season for Morecambe because he sent in a transfer request. So we'll see what happens regarding all that. But honestly, uh, 
Honestly, I still think they're going to go down. But if they do pull off a, um, a um, if they pull off a great escape, it'll be fantastic for them and fair play to them. Uh, at the end of the day, so yeah, Morecambe. I had Morecambe twenty seconds, twenty first, twenty first. I had Accrington Stanley. It's a weird one because last season Aki had a fantastic season, just like Cheltenham. Uh, a fantastic season, just like last. Um, um, a fantastic season last season, Aki, just like Cheltenham. I just thought this season they would catch that syndrome where they would struggle a lot more. And currently they're twentieth, so they're only one place ahead. So I guess that's not too bad from me so far. Right on to twentieth. Twentieth, I had Forest Green. I had Forest Green to just survive, and Forest Green are now at the foot and bottom of the table. They are struggling to bits now. Connor Wickham has also um, also news today. Connor Wickham, one of Forest Green's main men this season, has left the club. He's left the Vegans, and that could put a real damper into Forest Green's um, survival hopes this season. And just like Morecambe, I really think they're going to go straight back down to League Two. But they should have never should have never got rid of Rob Edwards to Watford in the first place. The man that got them up to League One in the first place. And of course, Watford then sacked Rob Edwards. Now Rob Edwards is at Luton, uh, Watford's arch rivals, fun enough. But yeah, I think Forest Green have really paid the price in not um keeping Rob Edwards there. But yeah, it's been a it's been a hard season for the vegans so far. So it really depends if they can really pick up their form at the moment. Okay, 19th. 19th, I think I had, if I rightly remember, I think I had Cheltenham to finish 19th uh, at the start of the season. Let me just get my um, very first um, video up. Let's have a look. Yeah, I did. 19th, I had Cheltenham. Uh, they're one position ahead. Well, actually, I'm going to talk about both of them now because 19th, I had Cheltenham and 18th, I had Cambridge. And funny enough at the moment, Cheltenham are 18th in the league and Cambridge are 19th in the league. So that is very interesting. That is very interesting, not going to lie. Uh, Cheltenham, I think they'll stay up. I genuinely think they'll stay up. I think I, I, I would, especially what I, from what I saw from them when they played us on Boxing Day and they gave us a really hard time as well. I genuinely think they'll stay up. Alfie May, honestly, Ed Lundaloo, That I honestly think that team will survive. No problem. Uh, they should be another. They should have another season in League One next season. Uh, Pingo, Bristol Rovers fan saying, I don't think Forest Green were good in the second half of last season at all. Lost four 0 to Barrow when they were like twentieth. Got he's got a point there. He has got a point there. But then again, there are there is a rivalry, of course, between. Forest Green and Bristol Rovers, so I know there's no love lost between the two either. Uh, of course, I still remember the way Bristol Rovers came up um, at the end of last season. It was absolutely unbelievable. And um, I remember how fuming the Northampton fans were, but let's be honest, Rovers deserved it because Northampton didn't do it at the end and Rovers won 7-0 against Scunthorpe. So what does that tell you? They, they deserved it. Rovers deserved it. The table doesn't lie at the end of the day. It really doesn't. On to Cambridge. Uh, now, Cambridge, uh, Cambridge, I had 18th. Uh, I thought, like Cheltenham last season, they had a solid League One season. Uh, big shout out to Alfie, by the way, adds the Cambridge fan. Uh, should be doing a video again, uh, again with him soon. Uh, <clears throat> Cambridge, um, I had Cambridge to survive as well. I thought just like Cheltenham, they would only just survive. But personally, uh, personally at the moment, they're they're not doing as well as they um as well as they probably hoped. They had a good start to the season as well. Cambridge did, and look how much they've fallen. But I'll tell you what, they gave it a hard go against us as well. We bloody drew nil nil with them, but we have a terrible record against Cambridge anyway. Uh so, yeah, no, that was a very good result there for Cambridge, not going to lie. Uh, currently 19th in the league. They're in that relegation battle. I think it's going to be tight between them, Atkinson, Stanley and MK Dons on who stays up, really. Uh, personally, for me, Burton, Morecambe and Forest Green are going down already. But 
Cambridge, Attrington and MK, I think will I think will be the ones uh will be the ones um well it'll be one of them, it'll be two of them that'll stay up and one of them will go down. That's what I reckon. Uh still waiting for Harvey to join. Uh haven't heard anything from Harvey yet. Uh Catch you later, Luca. Catch you later. I hope you have a good night, mate. Uh, we'll catch you very soon, mate. And of course, I will see you at Ipswich next week as well. Uh, moving on to 17th. 17th is where I predicted the scum to finish this season. Exodus, a certain Exeter City Football Club. Uh, it's a tough one for me because uh, obviously... As a Plymouth fan, I would obviously bias bias wise, I'd I'd love to put them in the bottom four just because it's Exeter. But me being trying to be as realistic as possible, I just that. But that's that's the same with me with every club, even if it was bloody Torquay or Yeovil or whatever. But I I I, I genuinely thought Exeter would um, would survive this season and. To be honest, they are overachieving. They've done a lot better than what people thought, uh, which is, of course, annoying because they are the um, the annoying cousins at the end of the day. Uh, but, yeah, they are currently 10th in the league, so they're doing a lot better than what probably everyone expected, let's be honest. Uh, as long as we thrash them at St. James's Park in April, like we did in October 4-2 on Halloween, then that's all that matters because... There's no way I want to see a victory from them Grecians over us, or I will cry for definite. But personally, um, bias aside, I do think Exeter will be fine going into next season. Next season will be the one for them on whether they stay up or not, because they're going to have strong competition if your Northamptons or Leighton Orients or Carlisles are going to come up, for example. And it's the same with other clubs like Bristol Rovers, Cheltenham, Cambridge if they stay up, Shrewsbury. So just really depends on all that and et cetera as well. But um yeah, that's what I personally think for um the Rotten Cousins right now. They'll they'll be fine. Um it, they'll be they'll have League One again next season, and then next season I reckon will be the challenge of one for Exeter. Uh so yeah, we'll see what happens regarding all that. But as long as we destroy them in April, that is the main thing. And Giovanni Brown. Sam Nombe, Jay, uh, Jay Stansfield, uh, all get all get mugged off by Michael Cooper and uh, Dan Scar during the game. Then I will be happy, and of course I will be happy if any time, of course, when Plymouth take a victory over them annoying lots. So let's stop talking about um, Exeter and move on. So sixteenth. <laughs> 16th, I had Lincoln. This one I've got slightly wrong at the moment. Uh, well, when I say that, when I say that, I think they've been a very underrated side this season. But looking at the table, they're currently 15th. Uh, and I didn't realise Fleetwood got all the way up to 13th. So fair play to Fleetwood on that. So, uh, yeah, Lincoln... Uh, They've drawn 11 times this season. They're very well for um, for doing draws this season. Uh, I will say I will say that, but also they're doing very well against um, the so-called top teams this season, like us, Ipswich, Portsmouth, Sheffield Wednesday. They drew with Bolton last time out. They drew with Ipswich again last time out. Of course, they beat Ipswich at Portman Road, but no, Lincoln have done so well against the so-called top sides this season. Uh and you've got to commend them for that. You've got to commend them for that. And that's why they're going to be, um, they're going to be, um, that's why I think they're going to be mid-table come into the season. They'll be in League One, no problem next season. Uh, Argyle Army, keep up the cracking work, mate. Let's hope we get a result against Bolton and, and, and Ipswich. And yeah, exactly. I just want to say, even if we get a point at Ipswich next week, I will be very, very happy because... Of course, Ipswich aren't playing this weekend, but we are playing this weekend against Bolton. Uh, Ipswich are going to be uh, six points behind us at the moment, and we know Ipswich are going to go for the win next week at Portman Road. So, obviously, I'd love an away win like we did at Derby back in September. But if we, um, 
if we even get a point at Portman Road next week, I'll be I'll be very pleased because that's a point at one of our biggest rivals league wise this season. Same with Hillsborough when we play Sheffield Wednesday next month. Honestly, it will be it will be um we need um we need at least something against Ipswich and Sheffield Wednesday, and that will put a positive side from our point of view. Am I up or lower, mate? I am going to be in the uh, lower stand at Portman Road next week, mate. So that's where you'll catch me. But I'll be around the ground before and after the game, regardless anyway. So, yeah, uh, people will probably see me around and et cetera. So, yeah. Uh, so, now, nah, moving on. Uh, but, no, Lincoln. Uh, but, yeah, no. Um, Lincoln. Uh They'll be in League One, no problem next season. Uh, wouldn't even shock me if they finish in the top half. Oh, they're such an underrated side, honestly. And I knew it was going to be a hard game when I went to Lincoln in November at Sintel Bank. So, yeah, honestly, fair play to them. They're, they're having a much better season this season than what I had last season. So, good on Lincoln at the moment. I think Mark Kennedy's doing a really good job at the Imps at the moment. But yeah, Lincoln, they are currently 15th, though. They did have that disappointing 3-0 defeat to Burton the other week. Uh, but I still they'll be fine. Uh, they're a very underrated side, in my opinion. I had them to finish 16th. No, yeah, I had them to finish 16th. They're currently 15th, but I think they're a very underrated team. They're doing they're having a much better season than last season, and I will tell you that now. So that moves us on to 15th. 15th, I had Shrewsbury. 15th, I had Shrewsbury. Uh, to be honest, <clears throat> Shrewsbury is one of those clubs in League One that is basically as League One as you can get, if you want to sum it up that way. Typical mid-table team, apart from the 2017-18 season where they nearly went up to the championship and finished third in League One that season. But they're at... They're such a League One team, Shrewsbury. They'll stop you from getting promoted and at the same time, they'll make you get relegated. They're one of those teams, Shrewsbury. They're literally as League One as you can get. I should be doing Shrewsbury away in April. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, it's not far from where my um, some of my family live now in Telford in the West Midlands. Uh, so, yeah, uh, even though we're all Cornish, but... Yeah, I'm really looking forward to Shrewsbury away. That's going to be a really, in April, that's going to be a really interesting one. For us boys in green, for definite, for definite. Um, but yeah, Shrewsbury currently 16th in the table. So yeah, I'm just basically not surprised with their season at all at the moment. So moving on to my two worst predictions so far at the start of the season. So... In 14th, at the start of the season, I had Burton. And in 13th, at the start of the season, I had Barnsley. Both of these I have so got wrong at the moment. It's unbearable. I never thought Burton would do this badly this season. They they were especially woeful right at the start under, under Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. Uh I thought Burton would frustrate a few teams again this season. And I thought they would stay up no problem and finish 14th. But they have been absolutely dreadful this season. So it's definitely one prediction I've definitely got wrong at the moment. Uh, I genuinely think they're going to go down to League Two for next season. And our game against Burton, I don't really want to talk about because we got it was an absolute robbery, as we all know. And if you look back at my live stream... Uh, mine and Liam's live stream of when we watched um, the Burton game. Daylight robbery. I was absolutely fuming with the referee that game. It was generally the worst feeling ever. Uh, but And yeah, as for Barnsley, they have surprised me as well this season. It's a hard one because I highly rate their manager, Michael Duff. What he did for Cheltenham last season was unbelievable. And I thought the minute Barnsley signed him, I thought considering they went down, and they had a woeful, awful championship season last season. That's a very good manager signing by Barnsley, I thought. But I just thought with the season they had in the championship last season, and I know, um, I know that, um, I know that. Um, well, basically, yeah, no. Um, with the way with the championship season Barnsley had last season, and also with uh, with they, I. 
don't think personally they had the strongest of um transfer windows either in the summer. I just I just honestly saw them as being mid table this season and it did and it wouldn't have shocked me at all. But they have surprised me a bit this season. They're doing a lot better than what I thought. So fair play to Barnsley for that. Currently sixth in the league. So fair play to Michael Duff and his team for that. Liam Kitchen is absolutely class for Barnsley. As is um as is Devante Cole. They've got a very, they've got an an underrated team and we have still got to play Barnsley at Oakwell in March, and that is not going to be easy at all. It's not going to be easy at all. We played Barnsley on the very first game of the season, and we won one nil thanks to a Finnazaz masterclass. But Barnsley did give it give um have some chances though, and even though we were the much better team, they did get have um give us some chances, and uh, they hit the bar once as well. So yeah, honestly, uh, was a um. Barnsley have surprised me a bit this season because I had them as mid-table this season considering the championship season they had last season. But Michael Duff's side have really proved me wrong so far. And they're doing better than both Derby and Peterborough. As you know, not better than Derby. Derby are now ahead of them in the table, but they're doing a lot better than Peterborough at the moment this season. So, yeah, fair play to um, Michael Duff's side for that. And I think Barnsley... Um, I think Barnsley will be playoffs at the moment, but I'm not going to say what position. Obviously, I'll wait for the my mid... Um, Midway, um, midway predictions for that. Uh, but yeah, Barnsley, yeah, they're doing all right. They're doing all right. Uh, Pingo, Bristol Rovers fan, that 4 0 loss to us really early on was dreadful for Burton, typical of the first half of their season. Completely agree, mate. I completely agree. And I remember that game as well. You absolutely hammered Burton that game, you made Burton look like a typical League Two side, honestly. That was an annihilation by Rovers, that game. Uh, Lewis Gale, uh, what's your thoughts on us fans who stand at away games? Uh, well, I don't really I don't really have an opinion on that, really. If people want to sit down, they want to sit down. If people want to stand up, they want to stand up. But either way, as long as you're passionate about the team, that's the main thing. The thing is, is that I've heard from so many people, and I've never been to Ipswich um, away. Next week's going to be my first time, of course. I've heard that um, it's a very, very, very loud ground, just like Pom what Pompey is. Uh, so I'm just calling for us boys in green, the fans, everyone in that away end at Portman Road next week to sing their absolute lungs off next week and chant non-stop, drums everywhere. And the players need it as well for the boost confidence for next week. It's a massive game and we know Ipswich are going to be up for it as well. We need to do everything to be behind the team next week at Portman Road. I don't want any toxic fans booing the team or any toxic fans um, just, um, yeah, just, you know, in general. And then us losing to Ipswich and the toxic fans going on. And this is the start of the downfall. Like, shut up. It's so annoying. Got to be behind the team no matter what. That's how you support a football club at the end of the day. And some fans, in fact, the majority of some of some fans in this country, fail to understand that. Anyway, I'll now move on to my top half of my July predictions. Twelfth, I had Charlton, one place higher than uh, than last season when they finished thirteenth. I genuinely didn't think anything was going to hardly improve for Charlton this season. Uh, when they thrashed us 5-1, I thought, you never know, they really could improve this season. But they've had some awful games at the same time as well. Charlton's been hit and miss this season. They've had some phenomenal results like against us, the Rotten Cousins Exeter when they beat them 4-2, Portsmouth when they beat them 3-0. They beat Pompey at Fratton Park the other week. To be fair, Charlton have a good record against Pompey. They came from 4-2 down versus Ipswich at the Valley to draw level four all. But then there's games like Forest Green, for example, and MK Dons where Shelton have been, and Cheltenham where Shelton have been absolutely shocking. They've been hit and miss this season and they're currently 17th in the league. That just shows how inconsistent they are. I still think the sacking of Ben Garner is by far the worst sacking of this season so far. It was an absolute stupid decision by the owners at Shelton. And I don't blame any of the Charlton fans wanting their owners to go after that Ben Garner sack. And I thought that Ben Garner sacking was absolutely ridiculous, personally, myself. 
And I didn't think he was doing that bad at Charlton either. I also would like to give a shout out to the Charlton fan, Tyler Rowlinson. Uh, I watch your videos, uh, mate, Tyler. They're absolutely class and your passion for Charlton's absolutely amazing. Uh, I think that... Um, I and um Tyler was the same. Tyler was exactly the same that um when uh when Charlton um when Charlton sacked Garner, he was fuming himself. And I couldn't blame him to be fair at all. I think nearly all of the Charlton fans were fuming that Garner was sacked. Honestly, I thought it was a pathetic decision by the addicts owners. And yeah, they're currently sitting 17th. They're not doing well at the moment, but you never know, they could still pick up the pieces for this season. And wouldn't surprise me at the end of the day anyway. They're a massive club, Charlton. So they're really underperforming at the moment. 11th, I had Wickham. 11th, I had Wickham at the start of the season. Now, during the first half or the very first half of this season, I thought I had this prediction spot on because I thought Wickham did not have the, the start that they would have wanted. And we had a brilliant result at Adams Park back in October, thanks to that Sam Cosgrove penalty. And we did the double over Wickham this season as well, which is massive. But... When they played Portsmouth and Ipswich, especially their 2-0 win over Portsmouth, that was, for me, easily Wickham's best result of the season. From, like, end of November onwards, and or November in general onwards, we, Wickham were, have been absolutely brilliant. And they've really picked up the pieces, and they're now seventh in the league. And I'll tell you what, they've replaced their goalkeeper, Stockdale, well in the transfer market with their new um, keeper, Stroike. He's been fantastic for the chair boys this season, as has, of course, Anis Mometti. For me, one of the best players in League One at the moment. He's absolutely fantastic. Nah, Wickham are doing a lot better than what I thought. I thought after the departure of Akin Fenwa and speculation surrounding Gareth Ainsworth's future in the summer, I didn't think they'd be up there as they were last season when they finished sixth and nicked that playoff spot over us, for God's sake, at the end of last season. That's why I had Wickham to finish a bit lower down in the 11th. But no, they're doing really well. They're doing a lot better than what I thought. And they're another one that I would not be shocked about in finishing in playoffs again at the moment. Yeah, Wickham are doing really well right now. So now we move on to 10th place. And this was my surprise of the season because most people would have had them in the bottom half of... Um, off the table at the start of the season, but they were my surprise of the season because I thought they did really well in the transfer market. And I really thought Joey Barton was gonna was going to, um, was going to make an impression this season. But yeah, my tenth place at the start of the season was Bristol Rovers. Honestly, honestly, very underrated side. Two fantastic strikers, Coburn, Collins. They're both phenomenal strike. Uh, they're a brilliant striking force for for the gas. Honestly. Uh, Honestly, they were my surprise of the season this season, um, Bristol Rovers. Um, and I had them to finish 10th at the start of the season. And that, if you look at that, really, that that would be, um, that that's really, that would be a phenomenal season for Rovers when you come up from League Two as well. And uh, yeah, they're currently 11th at the moment. They're currently 11th at the moment. They're, they're doing really well. They're, they did have a rough patch in summer, in um, around like the, um, middle part of the first half of the season around Joey Barson, which had them near the relegation zone. But but a few but a few a few weeks after they really picked up the police pieces. I've, in fact I think from the moment Rovers played us at the Mem, they really picked up the pieces because I thought we were so poor at the Mem. And to be honest, in a way I'm not surprised because we don't have a good record at the Mem at all. And Rovers are always up for a game against the likes of us and Exeter as well. So yeah, no, honestly, um, they're doing they're doing really well this season at the moment, Rovers. Uh, and I'll tell you what, I watched that game the other week between Bristol Rovers and Exeter. It was a shame bloody Exeter won it for God's sake, but that is a proper West Country game. That was that that match. It was honestly, for me, one of the best games of the season so far. Whether whoever side won that match, just the only annoying thing being, of course, that bloody Exeter won that match. And funny enough, um, well, not funny enough, but I had Bristol Rovers to win that game two 0 before the game happened because of Exeter's awful run before that, and then Exeter bloody won the game for God's sake. But yeah, going back to Rovers, yeah, they've been been a very good um. Been a very good, um, been a very good, um, very good season, I reckon, by Rovers so far. Easily, they'll be in League One next season. I think, similar to Exeter, the challenge for Bristol Rovers will be next season. Um, 
to simply be in League One again after next season. So I think I that that's what I personally think for Joey Barton's side, and that I think will be the aim for both Rovers and Exeter. Is that they'll both stay in the league this season, and the next season they're both going to aim for survival in League One. I think no matter what. But yeah, um, Rovers, Rovers, Rovers are doing all right. Honestly, they're doing all right. They're both level on points as well. Rovers and Exeter, thirty-four points, and the same amount of wins, draws, and defeats. Nine wins, seven draws, nine defeats. Nah, they're they're doing well. Rovers are doing well, and even better for Rovers. They're now ahead of bloody Pompey in the table. So, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? When back when I went to Fratton Park, Pompey were right in the top four with with us, and now look where they bloody are. Um, I guess for their point of view, Danny Cowley has been sacked, and that could change things for them. But no, yeah, I can't blame you, um, Pingo, for um, hating that um, that result at the end. But when I, I look back at that game against Rovers in October when we went to the Mem, yeah, we were 2-0 up. And the first half, of course, we were so much better than the second half. The second half, we were all over the place. And to be honest, I look back at it thinking, in a way, I'm glad we got a point because it was always going to be a hard game. Rovers were always going to be up for playing us boys in green. And if anything, it's better we didn't lose. So, yeah. Um, and Rovers deserved a point without a shadow of a doubt anyway, because I thought we were crap that second half at the Mem. Uh, so, yeah, no. Uh, better we got a point at the Mem than, than absolutely nothing. Uh so yeah, that that's the way I saw that game against Bristol Rovers. It could have been a lot, lot worse. So yeah, that's all I can tell you really from that. Uh, moving on to ninth. Ninth, I had. Well, we weren't. Pingo's just said you weren't great in the first half. Long shot. Merchants got lucky. We, but we were better in the first half than the second half. That's what I thought. Second half, we were absolutely woeful. Uh. But I do see what you mean, though, because Rovers, of course, I'm not saying Rovers didn't play bad at all, because Rovers played great all game, even in the first half as well when we went 2-0 up. But, yeah, it was a hard it was a hard away day for us. But, like I said, our second half was way worse than our first half. Uh, 100%, 100%. Ninth, I had MK Dons. Uh, um well, I don't think anyone had them to drop where they are now, this far low. Shocking season for the Dons at the moment. Liam Manning, of course, has been sacked already. Uh, they are second bottom in League One at the moment. Uh, well, when I saw them lose Scott Twine and Harry Darling, I did not expect them... Um, when I saw them lose Scott Twine and Harry Darling, I did expect them to drop down a bit, but I didn't expect them to drop this far down. They have been absolutely woeful this season, the Dons. Or as they'd like to call themselves, the franchise. The franchise have been absolutely awful this season. Uh, their, their, their key is to simply stay up now, basically. Their key is to simply stay up from uh, in, in League One for another season. Simple as that. They're in that relegation battle with Forest Green, Morecambe, Burton, Accrington, Stanley, Cambridge... That is really the goal now for MK. They've been they've been awful this season. Their best result was probably their 2-0 win over Pompey at Fratton Park. But yeah, they have been awful this season, but I never expected them to drop this far down. There were some YouTubers out there who still had MK Dons in the playoffs and stuff. But I wasn't sure considering the way they lost Scott Twine and Harry Darling. But yeah, it's not been a good season for MK at all, honestly. I can't, they could still stay up, but they're in that relegation battle 100%. It's been an awful season for them. Eighth, eighth, I had Derby. So, uh, and the, and I know a lot of people had Derby to absolutely, um, absolutely hammer this league. But to be honest, uh, to be honest, um, the reason why I didn't was because, of course, they were coming back from, uh, they um they were coming back from uh they were coming off from their financial woes at the end of the day and of course if it wasn't for their financial woes Derby would be in the championship this season and we would have faced Reading this season instead because Reading were awful in the championship last season but 
No, um, because of Derby's financial woes, that is exactly why I didn't think they'd do as well as what people would think. Don't get me wrong, the signings they made in Hurahan and McGoldrick are fantastic signings. You can't you can't deny that at the end of the day. I think if Wayne Rooney hadn't left the club, I think I would have predicted them a lot higher. But I think it would have been a lot different this season if Wayne Rooney was still in charge at Derby. Uh but yeah, no, um, I had them to finish. I had them to finish eighth. I didn't think they'd come straight back up. I think they'd. Fo- I I think they're going to focus on next season. Next season, as it stands, I think they'll win League One. Personally, so depends on who they sign and stuff as well. But personally, next season, I think the top two will be Derby and Bolton, as it stands in League One. But you never know. You never know. Um, yeah, I had them eighth. I didn't think they'd go straight back up, but. They are picking up the pieces a bit now into this season. They are now fourth, so they're doing they're doing a lot better than in earlier parts of the season. And to be fair, they're the only um, they've only lost five times this season. Them and Pompey have have the fewest defeats out of anyone in this league, apart from the top three, basically. So yeah, uh, not bad from Derby, to be fair. They're doing better. They're doing better. Seventh, I had Oxford. This prediction hasn't gone well either. I thought Oxford, just like us, um, would have been absolutely hurting um, from missing playoffs last season. And just like us, I really thought they'd 100% be up there this season and really get revenge and be battling near the top, to be honest, for it. But they have surprised me a little bit. They are currently 14th in the league. Uh, they're basically a mid-table club at the moment, Oxford. Uh, yeah, no, I was um surprised me a bit because I thought Oxford would be up there battling with like your Wickhams and Peterboroughs, for example. But yeah, they're not. Uh, then they're, they're not doing as well as they probably hoped they would at the moment. But they're mid-table. They're currently fourteenth. They could still easily finish in that top half of the season. Uh, and they're still an underrated side. And I will tell you what. And I'll say this now, when we go to the Kassam on Valentine's Day next month, it is not going to be easy at all. They will give it a hard game. And they gave it a hard game when they came to Home Park in September anyway. So, yeah, it will be a hard game next month for the Kassam. I plan to go to Oxford next month as well. So, yeah, it'll be very interesting. Uh, so, yeah, um, yeah, seventh I had Oxford. So now I move on to my playoff places at the start of the season. Sixth, I had Portsmouth. Uh, Portsmouth currently 12th. Re- they're, they're probably my biggest surprise at the moment uh, this season, Pompey. Uh, they're probably my really my biggest surprise at the moment because after, after we drew two all with them at Fratton Park back in September and then playing Ipswich the following week, I really thought with the squad they've got, they've got a good team. They've got a good team. They've just had terrible management and they just bloody, they've just been underperforming. Ever since they lost 3-2 to Ipswich at Portman Road, they have just been heavily underperforming. And it's been shocking from them. This this run of, this draw, draws and defeats run of form has been absolutely shocking from Danny Cowley's side. Well, no longer because Danny Cowley's been sacked by Pompey now. But they've really surprised me. I really thought... After that game they had against us at Fratton Park, they would be up there with us, Ipswich and Sheffield Wednesday. And like Pingo, the Bristol Rovers fan, has just said here, Portsmouth is so confusing. That is actually the best word to describe Pompey at the moment, is confusing. It's confusing. They've got such a good team. Colby Bishop, Dane Scarlett, Marlon Pack, Sean Raggett, Clark Robinson. When when they're on form, Conor Gilvey, when they're on form, they're a brilliant size, but... They've just been underperforming massively at the moment and just terrible management lately from Pompey. Uh, Cowley's gone now. Uh, so it's going to be interesting how they're going to um, match against us next month at Home Park. They could still push for a playoff place, but I think now it's too little too late for them. I think they'll finish in the top half, but I think I think... They might get playoffs, but I think now it's too little, too late. If I think if they sacked Cowley a lot earlier, or like a month ago or something, it might be a little different. But after they lost to Wickham, for example, or MK Dons, even though MK Dons, to be fair, was a few weeks ago, but still, 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 
I think they've trusted Cowley too much. And I think I think that's what's costed them. I think that is really what's costed them. I thought they would turn their fortunes around, to be honest, because when they played Ipswich, I actually thought they were going to do Ipswich and win 2-1, but Ipswich did get an equaliser at the end. But then they returned to their normal underperforming drawing selves, um, no, defeating um, selves against Charlton, and that's what's costed Cowley his job. So, yeah, no, just they are confusing, Pompey. Uh, I had them sixth at the start of the season. They're currently 12th. They should be a lot higher than 12th, to be honest, with the team they have. But, yeah, it's just been, ever since they lost to Ipswich, 3-2, it's been so poor from them. And even when they lost 3-0 to Charlton, I still had them as a possible threat going into this season because they only had, like, a, like about... Um, about two or three draws after Ipswich before that Charlton defeat. But after that Charlton defeat, um, they only had that one win and that was away at Forest Green. And other than that, they've just been absolutely shambolic. I, I genuinely cannot believe it because at the start of the season, and I know we're all probably saying this because this is probably every Pompey season at the moment, at the moment, but before that game we had against them at Fratton Park in September, I thought, I literally said it could go either way, but I was confident us boys in green would win 4-2. Uh, but yeah, no, they are confusing Pompey. I don't know what's going on with them. We're going to have to rely on them to do us big favours as well, because they still got to play Sheffield Wednesday as well at Fratton Park in March, the day we play Barnsley away. But yeah, they might pick up their form, but oh, bugger knows, bugger knows. They're a very confusing side. Right, fifth, I had Bolton. Fifth, I had Bolton. Uh, not surprising them. In fact, they're currently fifth at the moment, so what does that tell you? Um, I thought Bolton would improve from last season, and I'll tell you what, they're a very good side at the moment. Um, that's who we've got next, of course, on Saturday, and I'll tell you what, I ain't underestimating them one bit because they are, even though we've got such a good record against Bolton, it will not be easy. They have got a good side. <sighs> Excuse me. Oh, even I'm getting tired. Uh Steve earlier did predict it, didn't he? But yeah, I think Bolton, yeah, I think they will be in the playoffs, no problem. They've got a fantastic side, personally. Uh Dion Charles, James Trafford, who I think is the best keeper in the league at the moment. Uh honestly, yeah, they're doing really well. They're doing really well. They had a fantastic away win um at Barnsley the other day. So what does that also tell you as well? So, yeah, honestly, uh, now nah, fair play to um, fair play to Bolton for that. Honestly, they're doing really well at the moment. Then fourth, I had Peterborough. Peterborough have been very inconsistent. 11 wins, two draws, 11 defeats. They have had the least draws out of absolutely everyone. I can't see them getting into the playoffs at all, to be honest. They're too inconsistent and... Just like Pompey, they're another one I expected to be a lot higher. Grant McCann is not doing what he did at Hull two seasons ago at the moment. They're, they're, and the, my other issue with Peterborough is that I think they're just heavily relying on Clark Harris at the moment, who is the top scorer in this league. And, and he's been linked with a move away to the Championship this January as well. So I think if he does go, that could be an absolute... Um, that could be an absolute... Um, lash up for the posh. So yeah, no, honestly, they're they're currently eighth in the league. But yeah, just like Pompey, they're another confusing side. They should be doing a lot better, um, Grant McCann's side. I think he could be one that could leave that club soon as well. So yeah, it wouldn't shock me. They're so inconsistent. They they fell down the league so quickly. And to be honest, I think the day we played Pompey at Fratton Park, Peterborough were a bit off the pace and I didn't have them to didn't have them to go up at all. Maybe playoffs, but they're nowhere near the levels the um the topish teams are this season. They're really not doing well. And one three places that Peterborough have been terrible at this season, the West Country, simple as that, because they lost to us, they lost to Exeter, and they lost to Bristol Rovers all away as well. Honestly, honestly, um Peterborough have been shocking in the West Country this season. Um they did beat Sheltman, to be fair, but still, that's not really 
not really proper proper West Country like um us Exeter and Rovers are. So yeah, West Country's been an absolute um bogey region for um Grant McCann's side this season. But either way, yeah, I I even had oh, they played Wickham last time. I even had Wickham to win the game. So yeah, and Wickham did win the game at the end. Peterborough for me are not going up this season at all and will not be in the playoffs. They'll be having another season in League One. Uh, so that leads me to my top three, which is funny enough, the top three at the moment. Third, I had Ipswich, which is spot on at the moment, but I don't think they're going to finish third. I think they're going to be one of first or seconds come end of the season. I know the best team in the league at the moment is us, but they have. Um, they have um they have literally um they have literally probably the best squad depth in the entire league. Of course, we've got that massive crunch game against them next week when we're playing the likes of Freddie Ladapo, Connor Chaplin, Sam Morsey, Marcus Harness, uh you name it. Uh Christian Walton, the goalkeeper, Wes Burns. Edmondson, Wolfenden, they've got a very, very good team. Personally, I think us and Ipswich have been the two best teams this season. That's nothing against Sheffield Wednesday. They are a very good team. But personally, I think us and Ipswich are the two best teams in the league. And I think it will be us two that get automatics. I am I know we've lost Whitaker, which is obviously heartbreaking still. But I'm still confident we're going to do it. I still believe in our team. I really do. I really do. And if you want to look at my previous video for part one, it's all in there as well. But yeah, for me, it is going to be a three-way fight to the end between us, Ipswich and Sheffield Wednesday. So yeah, it's going to be huge. It is going to be absolutely huge. So that leads me into my top two. Sheffield Wednesday are currently second. And this amazing club, Plymouth Argyle, are top of the league. But I had it the other way around at the start of the season. I had Argyle to finish second at the start of the season. And I had Sheffield Wednesday to win the league at the start of the season. And to the those of you who don't know why, um, so this is why I had us to finish second at the start of the season. I was very confident in the team going into the new season. Just like Oxford, I really thought we were going to properly get revenge especially with the way we end um last season ended with that painful 5-0 defeat to MK Dons the only player Argyle Army's off got to go mate have a good evening fella yeah mate I will do I'll probably I've calmed down now than earlier that's for sure I will tell you that but um I was confident in the team the only one we got we lost was Panucci Kamara uh which was a shame because he what he has been a brilliant midfielder for us at the end of the day but I was confident in the team going into the start of the season, regardless anyway. Even if we did finish at the start of the season, I would have taken playoffs regardless anyway, because I know how tight this league is, honestly. But the minute we went top and then we got that brilliant win against Wickham, I literally looked, and Sheffield Wednesday, I looked at that thinking, we've got to go for autos this season. Look at us this season. Honestly, it's a long way to go. and I still believe in our screens. Come on, the Janus. I think I've said a lot about us already, let's be honest, this season. And then that leaves us with Sheffield Wednesday. I had Sheffield Wednesday to win the league. I thought the signings they made were were, were brilliant uh, at, the, um, at the start of the season. Uh, the way they missed the, um, the promotion as well when they got knocked out by Sunderland, I really thought they'd get revenge on, on it this season. And I really thought they strengthened in their squad as well. Darren Moore's a very underrated manager as well. I remember him in the Premier League with West Brom. But yeah, I think a lot of people, to be honest, have Wednesday as favourites to go up this season. Uh, and I included had Wednesday to win the league this season. But funny enough, we are the top two at the moment. So some of my predictions there actually are not too bad. There's others that have been woeful, like Barnsley and Burton, for example. But some of my predictions, like the top three, have been brilliant at the moment. So fair play on that. But Still got a long way to go and I will need to predict my midway table prediction soon. That will hopefully be with another YouTuber on that as well. But yeah, uh, before I close the video, I don't think Harvey's going to join at the end. Uh, I will um, I will ask him one more time. Uh, 
Let me just mute myself. Anyway, uh, there we go. Uh, team of the season so far in League One. Right, I'm going to look up stats here to help me on this regardless anyway. I did think of a rough... I did think of a rough um, team of the season so far a few months ago, but I know with um, with the table changing and stuff and all things um, changing and etc., that has changed slightly a bit, but I'm gonna go through I'm gonna go through my team of the season regardless anyway. Uh so yeah. Um but I wanna I wanna research this as well. So just in case if there are any shouts of players I do miss at the same time as well. Uh I knew I knew Pingo would say that about Aaron Collins. I knew he was. And to be fair, I can't blame him because Aaron Collins has been fantastic this season. I can't blame I can't blame uh I can't blame Pingo one bit for that. But um you will you will you will find out. It's you know what? My attack has actually been my hardest bit of who to put in and etc. It really has. It really, really has. So uh Honestly, uh, honestly, I, uh, I really, it is tough at the same time as well. It really is tough. Uh, but some that I know I've got for definite, I will go through now. Uh, my goalkeeper is James Trafford for Bolton. Honestly, non-bias bias aside, I would love to put Coops in, but honestly, He's been phenomenal for the Trotters this season. And like Pingo's just said, too many good attacking players. Uh, yeah, my goalkeeper has been... Um, my goalkeeper has been James Trafford for Bolton so far this season. So, yeah, um, been phenomenal. Been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, my right back, my right back is Liam Palmer for Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, so yeah, honestly, uh, no, nah, very good player for Wednesday. Uh, so yeah, no, good on him. Uh, my left back is, uh, my left back is ours, Mally Mumba. I mean, what more can you say? Honestly, what more can you say? He is the best left back in the league. I don't know anyone else who would contest with him at the moment. He's phenomenal. Someone will give a shout, obviously. I won't be surprised, but I, yeah. My left back's Bally Mumba. My two centre backs are Dan Scar, also for us, and uh, McGuinness for Sheffield Wednesday. He's another brilliant centre back as well. So that leads me on to my three midfielders. And my three midfielders are Adam Randall for us, Sam Morsey for Ipswich, and Barry Bannon also for Sheffield Wednesday. So that's eight players already. Eight players already. So now that leads me into my front three. And there is a lot of shouts. Aaron Collins is one of them for Bristol Rose. I'm not saying he's quite in my team yet, but I know he is one that is in the running for this. Aaron Collins, Johnson Clark Harris, Colby Bishop, Marcus Harness. Harness has been injured. Oh, Connor Chaplin's another shout, to be fair. Another brilliant player. Anis Mametti. I think it's any between one of those guys. And it's really, really hard for me to choose the three out of them because they have all been absolutely superb. That's so tough. That is so tough. 
a lot of people will be like to me, Clark Harris should be in it because he is the top scorer in this league. But like Pingo said, statistically, Aaron Collins. It's so tough. It is so tough. I'm going to get statistics up again, actually, for um, for this season to decide my front three. To be fair, you, you could have Marlon Pack in the team as well. He's a brilliant midfielder for Pompey, but I just wouldn't have him over, obviously, Ban Bannon, Randall and Morsi. But Pack would be more attacking anyway, but... The reason why Marlon Pack doesn't get into my team is is disciplinary, but he's still a brilliant player no matter what. I think the one Pompey player that would get in would be Colby Bishop, but I don't even know if he would get in yet. So oh, the front three is so tough. It is so tough. So tough. I, I need to get statistics up to help me decide on who the front three is going to be. So I don't always just go for statistics wise on that. I always go for like either most improved or like someone that's really stood out to me this season as well. Oh, this is so tough. Oh my God. Oh my God. Here we go. Season, season specific. Okay. I hate to say this as well, but also Sam Nombe's a shout for Exeter. And personally for me, he has been Exeter's best player this season. So, yeah, but I don't know if I would have him or not. I don't really want to anyway, for obvious reasons. But, I mean, look, to be fair, nah. Okay, right. Two are decided, Clark Harris and Aaron Collins. Clark Harris is top for top scorer. Aaron Collins is top scorer. Is, um, is second, is, in, fact, in fact, Aaron Collins is joint top scorer with Johnson Clark Harris on 13. But also Aaron Collins is top assist as well. Yeah, no, he's got to be in. Collins has got to be in. He honestly has. So yeah, those two get in, Collins and Clark Harris. So that leaves me with one more player. Oh, to be fair, I know I've gone with Mumba for left back, but also you could go with Ips, which is Leif Davis, because he's been brilliant as well. And he's um he's third for top assists as well. But no, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to choose Mumba. Mumba's been phenomenal. He has been brilliant though, Leif Davis. Leif Davis would be on my bench, to be fair. So who would be my last one? Definitely Collins, definitely Clark Harris. I don't think Mehmeti's out of it. I'd love to put him in. He's a brilliant player, but he hasn't had the season, quite the season Bishop has, Chaplin has. So that's Mehmeti out of it already. I think I'm going to rule out Harness as well because Harness hasn't had the season Chaplin has has had so far. Harness is a phenomenal player, though, to be fair. Yeah, I'm going to say Chaplin. I'm going to say Chaplin. He deserves it. He deserves it. Yeah, that's my front three. Connor Chaplin, jo Johnson Clark Harris and Aaron Collins. They are my front three. So I'm going to repeat my team this season again. James Trafford, Liam Palmer, Bally Mumba, Dan Scar. McGuinness, Mark McGuinness for Sheffield Wednesday. Adam Randall, Sam Morsey, Barry Bannon. Connor Chaplin, Aaron Collins, Johnson Clark Harris. And that team has changed a bit from what I had two months ago as well um, at the start of November. Because at the start of November, my team was this. James Trafford, Liam Palmer, Bally Mumba. Sean Raggett, Dan Scar, Sam Morsey, Adam Randall, Barry Bannon, 
Colby Bishop, Marcus Harness, Johnson Clark Harris. So yeah, my team has changed massively. And you know what? I'm glad I've changed it massively as well. So yeah, that is my team of the season so far. But of course, there's still a long way to go. There is still a long, long way to go. Yeah, that's a tough one. Is Harvey going to join my uh going to join my um my stream? Just bear with me a second, guys. Yeah, while I wait for Harvey's confirmation, uh, while I wait for Harvey's confirmation, so yeah, no, honestly, uh, the main news today being Morgan Whitaker has uh, Morgan Whitaker has left Plymouth Argyle. He's gone back to Swansea City. Been a tough one. Been a tough one. Been a tough one, but. Like I said, it's not the end of the world. We can still get promoted. We can still do it this season. Look at the squad we have. Scar, Mumba, Randall, Cosgrove, Ennis. You name it. You name it. Danny Mayer. Honestly, you name it. You name it. It is gutting. It is gutting, but... It's going to be, it's going to be, it just shows that we've still got a long way to go for this season, for um for definite. We've still got a much long way to go. And I'll tell you what, uh, this run of form, these run of games is going to be mental. Bolton away, Ipswich away. Derby at home, Sheffield Wednesday away, Portsmouth at home. All in the space of a month. All in the space of pretty much a month. It's going to be mental. All of these games are going to be mental for us. Barnsley in March, Charlton in March, Peterborough end of February. I think the three main games after Barnsley on our so-called easy run I'd have to look out for the most is probably Bristol Rovers at home, Lincoln at home, and obviously the bu the buggers Exeter away. I think they'll be the harder ones in our so-called easy run. But there's also games like Morecambe, second half of the season, Burton, Cambridge. Burton and Cambridge, so we should eat, we should be at home, no problem. Still got Shrewsbury away. Still got Shrewsbury away. Still got Port Vale away. Port Vale away is our last game of the season. So that is going to be interesting. Very interesting. Ipswich have Fleetwood away. Sheffield Wednesday will have Derby at home. So there, that last day is going to be very interesting. So, yeah, uh, been a big week already for not just League One, but for the EFL in general. Uh, uh, so, yeah, honestly, it's going to be 
what what a second half of the season we've got coming up. Honestly, it's going to be um, it's going to be a oh, all right. Harvey's got back to me. Right, let's listen. Yeah, I'm gonna end it there, guys. Uh, we're gonna um, we're gonna uh, Harvey and I are gonna do another one at some point, hopefully during the week. Maybe not next week, but. That will be the, the end of the stream from then. Uh, we'll, I'm going to read um, Pingo, the Bristol, Rover, um, Bristol Rovers fans. Um, last two comments here. I hate the January transfer window so much. So do I, mate. I completely agree. I completely agree. Personally, I think there should only be a summer transfer window. And then, personally, I think there should only be a summer transfer window. And then all those all those, um, all those, those players that commit to that club, um, to a club for the season, they stay there for this whole season. And then the summer, move wherever you want, Yes, I guess. I don't agree with the January transfer window either. Yes, it may look to spice things up a bit more, but yeah, not honestly. Uh, I can't stand the January transfer window either. It's so irritating. And I'm I'm the same, mate. Even if I think Argyle's a, um, a big club, which I still think we are regardless anyway, but... It's the set. I've got the same feeling as you, as you there, mate. Uh, always scared our team will be ripped apart. And yeah, I, I think everyone in, I think everyone in the EFL thinks like that. When you think you're worried about, when you think you're worried um, about a Liverpool player um, going or a Man United player, Chelsea player, Manchester City player, Arsenal player, Tottenham player, that those six, it's nothing compared to. The EFL, absolutely nothing. I'd kill any day of the week to have Matteo Kovacic come to Plymouth Argyle. Be unreal. I'm probably saying that anyway. I'm probably choosing him because, of course, Chelsea is my second team. But that's what I mean. I'd kill to have Kovacic and Kante at Argyle. It'd be amazing. But yeah, um, yeah, that's going to be the end of the stream there, guys. Uh, yeah, and I will catch you all very soon. Uh up the Greens, up the Janners, up the Pilgrims, up the Argyle, up the Plymouth. PAFC, the team for me. Good night. And also, before I go, as also, bye-bye, Morgan. Once again, thank you, Morgan, for everything you've done for us. If you do move to a League One rival, I won't feel that sympathetic, but I hope you have the best... Um, best in your um, career, mate. Honestly, thank you for everything you've done for us, but hopefully our team doesn't struggle. That's all I can say. And touch wood, we'll be promoted this season. Thank you for everything, Morgan. You've been a pleasure for our football club. Love you.